Angi. Thank you so much for your patience, okay. sir. Uh, okay, having a little pro trouble listening. Don't worry about it. Okay, if you can hear me, Dr. Tari, uh, lots of messages coming in right now. Uh, Silpa Anyango says, Manu Chandaria is right. I actually sat in one of his classes at Columbia Business School in New York, where he was talking us through the equity bank case study. Dr. Tari, if you can hear me. A bit of a sound problem over there. I think we're going to go right to it. It's on our end, we're fine. Doctor, if you can hear me, can you hear me, Doctor? Doctor, doctor. Yes, I can hear you, oh, Jeff. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, thank you so much for your time, Doctor. Paul Asana for the uh, technical hitch. But um, lots of people saying, you know, this is a case study, and let's go back to 1984. You're a single building society, one branch. 36 years later. 36, no, 300 branches in six countries, Dr. Tari. Okay, here we go. All right. Do yes, Jeff. Okay, so I was saying, uh, a lot of people are commenting about you and your bank being a case study. In fact, all the way to Columbia University, that's what Silpa Anyango says. You started off 36 years ago one branch building society. Today, 300 branches, six countries. I made a problem. Doctor, can you hear me? Doctor? Uh, Jeff, we are breaking and. I'm uh, breaking. Ah, uh, that's talking why. Talking in bites. <laughs> okay. How is it now, Doctor? Is it better? Not yet, uh, uh -oh. Jeff. We're uh, breaking down in bites. Jeff. Pole, Jeff. pole, pole. Okay. All right. We'll get it. We'll get it going. Don't worry, Dr. Ari. Don't worry. Uh, if you can hear me, just... now you are good, Jeff. Is it better? Bad, better. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Here we go. I'll say this again. A lot of people are commenting about how Equity Bank is no doubt a case study, all the way from. Columbia University, Silpa Anyango says she, you spoke to them about the equity case study. Uh, 1984, you are one branch in a building society, as a building society. 36 years later, 300 branches, six countries. Talk to me about that, Dr. Ari. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jeff. It is true that uh, equity has made it... Uh, uh, in the world of uh, case studies. We have uh, 32 case studies uh, to our name. Harvard has three, MIT has two, Columbia University has nine, Ragos Business School has uh, 11, as a business school in Barcelona has three, and on and on and on, Jeff. But the best case studies for me uh, is the transformation that I see daily in the lives of our customers. When I see the transformation that is happening in the African continent among the 14 million customers of the bank, when I see small businesses starting and three, five years later, uh, their businesses employing hundreds of uh, uh, people, I feel very gratified. That practical case studies of life, of us doing, of us being enabled to do and transform our continent, those are the best uh, practical case studies. But however, uh, equity as a case study inspire a lot of uh, uh, people around the world. That uh, things are possible, business models can uh, be different, strategy can be formulated uh, to fit the situation. But more importantly, the lesson that we have taught uh, the world is that uh, business can be a purpose. And if well executed, purpose can be profitable and scalable and consequently sustainable. That lesson for me is very central and particular to our young people. The second lesson that uh, Jeff, that uh, I truly celebrate uh, beyond purpose is new thinking about philanthropy. That the biggest philanthropist may not be individuals, may be corporates that have invested massively in infrastructure like you have talked about the 380 branches of equities uh, spanning uh, um, six countries, and then used uh, to do good to society. If you look at uh, the Wings to Fly program, it is hubbed in our branches. 
it is the branch managers uh, who take uh, time off from uh, uh, serving customers to go and look at needy kids and to organize the, uh, for their scholarships, uh, to do uh, shopping for them and to take them to school. So 9,000 members of staff are doing that for free without any cost to the bank. And uh, of course, the branches have financial uh, literacy training. And if you look uh, today, we have 2.2 million people who have gone through the 11-week uh, training program, making them better in financial world. And simply, we are using the infrastructure of the bank as it exists. If you look at the IT platform of Equity Bank, it's put at the disposal of the foundation. And lastly, is making all this infrastructure uh, uh, available to like-minded people who want to do good to Africa. So if, whether it's other foundations, whether it's a development uh, organization or foreign governments that want to do uh, uh, something in Africa, they come and find the lady infrastructure organized for them. That, to me, uh, the concept of uh, corporate philanthropy will change the world if fully uh, adopted. You know, Dr. Tari, it's, it's uh, funny you mentioned uh, the Wings to Fly scholarship because there's a tweet here from George Ogola who's, asked, who's saying, how many children have benefited from the Wings to Fly scholarship and why is it that we only see them receiving scholarships but we never get to know if they graduate? What is the rate of success? Uh, thank you very much, Jeff and Gol, for that great question. Uh, to date, uh, we have 26,000 scholarships to uh, our name, and uh, another, uh, we still had uh, half pads for another 10,000 kids. So that would tell us uh, uh, or talk about 36,000 kids. The transition lead uh, from, uh, prima, uh, from primary to secondary, and those who complete is 98%. And more interestingly is then we have a transition lead of 82% of all our kids are to universities. So, so far, we have 14,000 kids who have made it uh, to uh, the universities. Uh, they are studying various uh, courses. Uh, they joined the equity leadership program. And we have 664 kids who are studying outside uh, the country, uh, about half of them in Ivory uh, uh, institutions. So this uh, mix of um, our national universities and international universities create a, a breed of best practices, global and uh, domestic combined. And I envy that generation because of the capability, the experience and exposure and uh, global socialization we have given them. And look uh, upon them that when they turn 40, they will be agents of transformation of our country. Okay, Dr. Ari, let's go back four months when suddenly the world came to an abrupt standstill. This coronavirus has literally devastated economies across the world. And now people, uh, your customers and even small businesses and individuals, took moratoriums on loans. That period, I think it was for three months or so, is coming to an end What's going to happen, Dr. Ari? Are you going to extend the moratoriums, or what are you going to do, especially in your bank, for instance? Uh, thank you very much, Jeff. As you said four months ago, when uh, this uh, pandemic uh, broke, uh, we uh, wore the, uh, the uh, hearts of uh, think tanks in the bank and started to do a war game uh, with COVID-19. Uh, and we went back doing research and uh, uh, doing case studies for the last 1,200 years, all the pandemics and how they have been affected. And the first insight we got is that uh, a pandemic of this magnitude, particularly a novel one that uh, uh, nobody understands, mm. cannot be assumed to take uh, a short period of three months. So despite the uh, uh, advisories that were going around about three months, we decided to take a conservative position and walk uh, our, uh, through our customers from the limited knowledge. So essentially, we segmented the customers based on the sectors they, they were in. And we took, for instance, the hospitality, hotels, uh, the aviation and the airline uh, industries, and said those ones 
we needed to give them at least three to four years. So Jeff, those ones are enjoying a break of four, of three to four years uh, from paying uh, interest and free from paying principal. Because we believe that it will take that long and those uh, customers should focus on preserving their companies, struggling to survive over that period when business is disrupted and looking after their employees. So the second category is those who we thought um, would take 24 months. Again, we gave them 18 to 24 months. Then there is 12 months to 18 months. There were six, uh, six uh, months. And then, of course, there were those who didn't require any time, uh, time breaks. Uh, people uh, like the tea farmers, tea is still uh, being plucked, the dairy industry, they could still continue to pay. And then there is health uh, and medical industry. We felt that uh, that didn't even actually require a break. They needed more money to take advantage of the opportunity of providing things like PPEs and addressing uh, the health pandemic uh, from uh, the requirements uh, that it needed. So we addressed the needs, and so none of our customers at the moment will be worried about uh, three months because we didn't give uh, a one-fit-all solution, magic three months. Mm -hmm. We took any, every sector, and to the best of our assessment from history, we gave it a, a, an appropriate period. And I'm, I'm glad that uh, they are at peace preserving their businesses and planning how to recover from the negative impact of COVID-19. Absolutely. That's, a, that's good news there, Dr. Ari. At the same time, there's only so much that banks like yours can do. And yes, we hear of stimulus packages like Kazim Tani, et cetera, for the youth and stuff. But is that enough or you need more? Uh, thank you very much, uh, um, Jeff. There's always a limit of ability. But let me say this. I'm really proud to be a Kenyan at this time because our government has really done significant uh, stimulus uh, programs to particularly to cater for livelihoods. Uh, the most important thing at the moment is the survival of the people, is removing the pain uh, that uh, the population uh, and our people are going through. So we have had two supplementary budgets, all geared uh, to providing livelihoods, whether it's in Nua Jami, whether it's uh, focus uh, on senior citizens, whether it's Kazi Kwamita, whether it's the jobs uh, in the county level. That was the most important step because it allowed uh, society uh, to avoid uh, problems of social disruptions uh, because of hunger or because of uh, suffering. The second aspect uh, I would really commend the, uh, the government for is a central focus to health, uh, ensuring at least there are 300 uh, bed facilities in every county, created the necessary infrastructure that once the, uh, the first line of defense uh, is infringed and an individual is compromised or is infected uh, by COVID, there is a <coughs> hospital that they could uh, seek support from. Uh, the third one, uh, which was very central, was the central bank the governor and the government responding by reducing the cash ratio and uh, ensuring banks enjoy liquidity. In principle, they injected 35 billion shillings uh, so that banks could have liquidity so as to co accommodate the business people. And lastly, I must applaud what our Ministry of uh, Health or CS Health and his team has done to ensure there is civic education so that there is awareness about COVID, and what we need to do. Uh, Kenyans can't say uh, that they didn't know. A lot of information has been provided for, to them, and that is an act of a very responsible government. And that's why I'm, I said I'm proud to be a Kenyan. Absolutely, Dr. Ari. You mentioned business people and you mentioned survival in your last uh, answer there. Many small businesses right now are on their knees or face collapse because of COVID. If they all collapse, Banks will lose customers. What are you going to do to help support the recovery of business? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jeff. Uh, as you like to said, this started as a health pandemic. 
uh, quickly it escalated into an economic uh, uh, crisis of a magnitude last seen maybe uh, 300 years ago in the 17th century, worse than the Great uh, Depression. Of course, uh, uh, we are now abating a social crisis where we are struggling for food and security become a major issue. But ultimately, this might spill into a financial crisis. So banks are not safe until uh, all people are safe, uh, particularly the business people. So for the banks, the biggest, uh, like uh, equity bank, uh, our biggest commitment was to help our customers comply with the health protocols. Because the most important thing to secure was our customers' health, our staff's health. And that is why we triggered equity up here. Uh, to ensure we educate our customers, uh, said to them uh, answers to frequently asked questions so that they can be informed. Use our staff uh, to be advisors because they are supported by doctors to be able to do that. The second thing, of course, is to do accommodation such that uh, you, once you give a business uh, two, three months, and we are able to do this, and I say this with gratitude, our shareholders agreed to sacrifice uh, the dividend of the year so that uh, we could be able to prolong and they can replace the cash flow that we lost from the repayment and that they could draw our uh, international community to lend us uh, more liqu liquidity. And I'm glad to say that we have about 50 billion shillings lined up to ensure we are able to support these SMEs. And lastly, was 60 billion shillings of uh, credit guarantees because if we didn't have guarantees, we would not have been able to extend the period to four years. But with the guarantees complementing securities and cash flows, then we could have a breathing space. However, let me say this, that COVID may change uh, the nature of our businesses. And our small businesses need to think and to reinvent themselves. I'm very proud of the seven businesses that have reinvented themselves they were in the textile industry, but now they have converted themselves into P PPE uh, producers. And they are assured of the 1.4 billion shillings that uh, as uh, the health uh, committee, we have been allocated by the COVID uh, book. And that, you can see, help us to reinvent themselves. They are now uh, supplying the, regional, uh, the region with the PPEs. So that ability for businesses to reinvent themselves, to adapt to the new environment, things like digitization, things like e-commerce that allows uh, business to operate in a COVID environment uh, and to help their clients to comply uh, with uh, the protocols uh, that has been spelled out is very essential for survival uh, of small businesses. If, I'm, if I am a small business, uh uh, I'm running a small business, Doctor. How do I access this money? Uh, you just uh, do the normal application. Uh, the customers know their branch managers. They know their credit managers. You just approach those ones. Um, uh, uh, first one, to extend, to ask for a moratorium to accommodate you during the period. And I'm glad 35% uh, of the customers have already applied and we have really processed and given them uh, breathing space. However, the government has also come with a credit guarantee that is being passed uh, through uh, the, uh, the banking industry, so that it's not just about equity. I expect all banks will be able to do this accommodation uh, so that uh, customers survive and recover quickly, and as COVID becomes suppressed, uh, they thrive and continue to provide the right for livelihoods, uh, create jobs for our country, but more importantly, help us to create wealth within our country so that collectively we can lift ourselves as a nation. All right, Dr. Ari, on that note, I'm going to take a quick break, come back and talk about uh, banking as we know it today. It's going more digital. How is our banks, physical banks, going to survive? And also, let's talk about James Mwangi for a moment. I mean, people say you are a billionaire. What do you do to, you know, to hang out, to have fun? Oh, before we do that, uh, there's a message here all the way from Kigali in Rwanda. Hillary, 
He's at the Serena in uh, Kigali. He says, Dr. James Mwangi is the man who revolutionized the banking system in Kenya. He's also committed to the fight against COVID-19. We salute him and we are behind him in his good cause. And before that, Manu Thank Chandaria you, man. also sends his greetings. He says, you're a great, you're not only a friend, he says, you are a great man. Let's take a break, Jataru will come back and we'll talk about those issues. When we come back, keep tweeting. Do you have any questions for Dr. James Mwangi? If you do, my Twitter handle is at CoinAngieJeff. And also at Citizen TV Kenya, the hashtag JK Live. JK Live takes a break. We'll be back. Wait a minute.